So while we are sitting with the Lord and being with our Father, this is the best time to have communion. So we're just going to invite you as um, children of God, (laughs) daughters and sons of the Father, to come and partake of communion. Would you mind playing a little bit more on the next song? And at the same time, as you come up, this is a great time to bring an offering. So you can express your love and your connection any way you want to. Um, The offering buckets are here. There are three by five cards in the back. If you have an offering of any expression of love at all in any form, then we invite you to do that at this time too. So we're just gonna have a little time of reflection um, as we share in the celebration of our Father and of Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit.
is no accusation or any condemnation when I look into my father's eyes they don't see my sin they only see redemption this is how my heart has been defined and then I heard a voice as it opened up the heavens reminding me of who I've always been I am your beloved you have bought me with your blood and on your hands
Good morning. June 19th, 1999, Jeremy and Holly got married. So let's all celebrate and show them. I'm sure they're watching online. Happy anniversary! Let's see all that together. One, two, three. Happy anniversary! We love you! Right on. Amen. Couple announcements while JR is handing out the uh, sheets. Um, calendar events coming up. Special Elevate Recovery on the 23rd. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, coming up this Thursday. Uh, the 25th, so Saturday, Praise Oregon uh, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. that we're hosting. And then David's Tent coming up in July. Always love going up there to uh, participate and see things happening in Salem. And God always does big things during that time. On my way here, actually on my way, I do a morning... Uh, house meeting on Sunday mornings at the Munson house. And I want to read something to you because a scripture came up. Um, I'll get to it in just a minute. On Caleb, as I was driving. So it's fun, you know. I just love how God gives things. He's been doing it all week for today. And so we just declare happy Abba Day, happy Father's Day to our Father in heaven. Here it is. It's out of Psalm 103, 13. The same way a loving father feels toward his children, that's but a sample of your tender feelings toward us, your beloved children who live in awe of you. So I quickly did a Hebrew search uh, on the word tender mercies or compassion, tender feelings. And, uh, and the Hebrew meaning of it is the womb. Like a father has deep compassion on his children or tender feelings, the word is raham or raham, and can also be translated womb. Listen to this. Our Father carries us in his womb. Our Father carries us in his womb. Back to where we started, right? <laughs> Back to where we came from. And, and he continues to do that for us. I want to talk about an Abba connection uh, today an authentic connection to Abba Father. And the verse, I believe, on your sheets is Romans 8 and verse 15. You did not receive a spirit of religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. How many of us ever felt never being good enough? The lie of the enemy that comes in and, and here's God saying, wait a minute, that's been replaced. That's been replaced with what Jesus did for us. And you're all good enough in his eyes because of what Jesus did. Because he only sees us through him. Such a powerful, powerful truth. So let's all say that. I'm good enough. I'm good enough. <laughs> I'm good enough, not by how we earn it, but by how God sees us through Jesus, all through Jesus. For you have received the spirit of full acceptance unfolding you into the family of God. So my goal over the next few minutes is to know that Abba Father wants to connect to you so much he will go to extreme measures to reveal and show himself to you. So I want to talk about connection through encounter. Connection through encounter. 
Uh, and by the way, the, next, the last part of that verse in Romans 8, 15 is, you will never feel orphaned. We always go by our feelings, right? And we can't trust our feelings. You will never feel orphaned, for as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved Father. Let's say that together. Beloved Father. One, two, three. Beloved Father. What a great reminder on Father's Day. Amen? So we'll just, we'll just rename it Abba's Day today here at Faith Foundry. Before we get into encounter, I want to talk a little bit about Abba connection versus disconnection. We deal, we deal with this a lot in the uh, workshops. By the way, our Elevate workshops are coming up uh, again this fall. They start the end of August. Is that correct, Christy? And so we talk a lot about disconnection. Disconnection. And uh, in, those, in those workshops, at least in Elevate 1. And I want to I want to talk, first of all, about how God uses desperation. I love Jeremy use, using the definition or the acrostic, actually, of G-O-D, you know, G period, O period, D period. Do you remember what he ta- calls it? The gift of desperation. The gift of desperation. So... About a month and a half ago, I had a gift of desperation. <laughs> I ended up in the hospital from a severe reaction to medicine. And instead of all of it being bad, God used it for encounter. Isn't that powerful? Now, in the middle of the bad part, I wasn't sure where it was going yet. Because <laughs> I got pretty desperate. But, but God loves to show up. God loves to show up. And it really came to a head about Wednesday morning, late Tuesday night, Wednesday morning at 1.30 in the morning. And I wrote this down. It was not good. I was nauseous, no sleep, been up for two days, blood pressure checked every 15 minutes that squeezed the top part of, part of my arm in half. Don't you love those? <laughs> I was hooked up to an IV that was pumping fluids and different medication into me every few hours. Blood, draw, blood drawn every couple hours. Get the, and that went on for two days. Nonstop. Just, and they couldn't get my blood pressure down. And Anyway, get the picture. I was pretty miserable. And it kind of came to a head. So what did I do? I tried to handle it my way. I tried to call Christy <laughs> at 1.30 in the morning. Well, she'd been up with me for two days, and she was back at the house trying to get rest. And, uh, and uh, she was pretty comatose at home. So but that's all right. So instead, I cried out to God. I cried out to God. By the way, this is the only second time in my life that I, ever, that I ever felt this desperate. This desperate. And I was still holding on to my phone when I tried to call Christy, and I looked down, and for some crazy reason, Spotify popped up on my phone. I hadn't been on it, hadn't even looked at it for a few weeks, and what popped up was a soaking by Joshua Mills. I'd never heard of Joshua Mills. And the only soaking I knew was Graham Cook. <laughs> and, uh, and I was thinking, where did this come from? So I clicked on it. The first one that came on was called Who You Are. And God was speaking identity into me. It 
it was heavenly music. A little bit like Holly, but not as good. <laughs> I mean, it's good, but, you know, Holly plays heavenly realm worship when she just goes off sometimes on the piano, you know, in the middle of worship. Have you ever noticed that? And all of a sudden, I am just transformed to a different place as she's playing. And it's just amazing. And as I listen to Who, Who You Are by Joshua Mills, everything changed. My panic went away. My heart stopped beating out of my chest. Peace just washed over me. And I heard, I heard Holy say to me, I got you, son. Oh, Abba Father. The next day I called Jeremy and he asked me, have you listened to Zach's soakings? And I went, what? And guess what it's called? Soaking in sonship. So I started listening to Zach's too. And by the way, my blood pressure dropped 10 points listening to Abiding by Zachary Carter. 10 points just listening to that one song. He wants us to abide in him. He wants us to run to him in the middle of these desperate situa situations. The God of desperation. How many, how many countries, Zach, are listening to your soakings now? Around 80? <laughs> and is Germany still way above all the rest of them? I just love that. And it's, I mean, it's amazing how many, too. And, uh, and so I encourage you to go on um, Soaking in Sonship on Spotify. Well done, Zach. But wait, there's more. That was just the tip of the iceberg because I've been listening to those soakings in the morning as I'm on my treadmill and on my elliptical bike. But first, I want to talk about that disconnection that I mentioned. We share in, the, in this workshop that we do twice a year out of John 10.10. 10, and the first part of the verse says, the thief. Who's the thief? Satan, the devil. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we mentioned that dis means separation, the opposite of connection. Dis means to separate. And one of the big ways that he does is he destroys horizontally so that our vertical connection gets messed up. And I'm talking about families, and I'm especially talking about the father wound. The father wound. The enemy knows what counts. The enemy knows how to, how to take out the family by working on the father. And it works. It works. It works until God steps in and changes men's lives. And so instead of the father wound, instead of an orphan spirit, God says, I've given you a spirit of full Acceptance. Let's say that together. Put your hand. Let's put it on our knower. That's a little bit below the, the heart in our knower, okay? A spirit of full acceptance. Let's do it again. Only three of you said it. Ready? A spirit of full acceptance. When you get that in your knower, no matter what lies he shares with you, you won't accept it. You won't believe it. You'll reject and you'll replace it with the truth of God's word. See, sons and daughters are birthed or revealed through the Holy Spirit. Now, God prophesied about this coming through Jesus when he said, He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. 
going to fix the mess that happened in the garden when disconnection happened. So my encounter was a reminder of I'm a son. I'm a son. And notice these phrases in Romans 8:15. Especially the second part when it says as he rises up within us I remember the first time the Holy Spirit rose up within me. And I received the gift of the Holy Spirit, but I had not had the Spirit rise up within me like this happened. And this was quite a while ago. It was at a recovery house in Green that we were helping through our Restore Appliances and more. And uh, one of the men's nephews showed up at the recovery house and, well, let's just say he was obviously high and under the influence of, I don't know, alcohol and drugs or combination of. And yet the, God told me, the Holy Spirit told me, Holy said, go over and pray for that man. And I got on my knees and I started praying for him and things came out of my mouth I had never spoke before. And he got sober immediately, immediately, on the spot. And we baptized him in the hot tub that night at that house. And he received the Holy Spirit. And I went, whoa, what was that? Then it happened again, connected to the store, when we were praying over uh, the man that was running it, and he was really upset about taking on and he felt he felt he didn't feel like he deserved it didn't feel like he could handle it and I was praying over him the same thing happened again he was so concerned and while we were praying in the spirit he was concerned about how much how much he was going to be able to keep keep going and and keep all the people that we had um, working there at the store and he was concerned about Money. He was concerned. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know. If, and I said, well, you don't have to do it. God does it. And as we were praying, somebody came in and bought like $4,000 worth of appliances. And it was the first of the month. And I said, you know what? That's all you got to do is get on your knees. Because he's the God that wants to show up. He's the God that wants to encounter us. It's such a great description there in Romans 8, 15, that as he rises up within us, as he rises up within us, I love that. And that's when our spirits join his spirit in saying, Beloved Father. How does this happen? Well, the very next verse shares that with us. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us. The Holy Spirit makes... It's His work. He makes God's fatherhood real to us. And He whispers into our innermost being, You are God's beloved child. So what if we don't see it, feel it, don't have it rising up within well, he likes to make it real, and he likes to show up in your life, too. It's not just in Dave Graman's life. He pursues all of us relentlessly, and he loves to show up in your life. So let's talk about making it real. How does he do that? Well, through encounter. He loves to do the impossible. Christy calls it bungee-jumping faith. When it's too big for us to do it. Have you heard her say that phrase, you guys? Bungee jumping faith. Yeah. Closest I came to bungee jumping is I did a ride with Jeremy called the Accelerator where you drop, you drop 10 stories 
and then you swing for a while. And it's like flying. And it was crazy. Bungee jumping faith. That's when God shows up to do the impossible. To do the impossible. Pardon? Yes. So something, this is just fresh, okay? So Christy shared with me as I'm in the office and came in, you cannot believe what happened this morning. So, yeah, that's perfect. Well, this fits because this is making it real for a young man who um, isn't, is, uh, I'm going to say he's clean and sober um, and he's healing. And he's our neighbor right now. And he was deep sea fishing yesterday. And um, <laughs> he had an incredible encounter while they were uh, several miles out uh, to see the, a boat that was, I think it was ahead of them and, you know, pretty far off. They watched it capsize. And uh, the captain of the charter said, we're done fishing, we're going to go save some lives. And so they went over uh, and, and hurried over as fast as they could. Um, it was a sneaker wave that had caught the boat and tipped it over backwards, and so it was upside down. And so all the passengers were trapped underneath. Um, and so they got closer, and everybody was scurrying around, and a res they were trying to rescue, but the, the water was pretty choppy, and the, what, the water is still very cold, so you can't, like, just jump in there and save somebody's life. You'll die, too. It's just that cold. And so uh, they, there were two children and two men on this capsized boat, and when the, uh, when the charter got close, uh, they were able to do drive-bys and snatch the children and uh, the one man, but the, the second man was about 400 pounds, big, tall man. And Ramey was the one down uh, trying to reach this guy, and he's obviously soaking wet. By this time, he'd been in the water like 20 minutes or longer, like a half an hour, and he was starting to get um, hypothermia, you know, where you just can't, you couldn't feel his limbs or anything. And Ramey was hauling on him, and he couldn't lift him, and he couldn't lift him, and he yelled out to God, God, give me the strength. And he hauled this guy up out of the water, and he fell back onto him into the boat. And it was a supernatural God strength that saved this. And, <laughs> and the guy was sitting in the, in the, laying in the bottom of the boat, and he's like, I can't really move, but if you'll get over here, I want to put my arms around you. He hugged him, and he said, thank you for giving me a Father's Day because I thought I was dead. I thought, I thought this was over for me. Ramey's encounter with God was doing something that was literally impossible for him to do it in his own strength, but God. But God. Amen. That's a fresh story. <laughs> that just happened yesterday. And uh, Ramey shared that, that with, with uh, Christy about that. So he loves to come in and do the impossible. To reveal himself to people. Here's a quote from Brian and Candace Simmons. God often asks us to do impossible things. He's not setting us up for failure. He's laying the groundwork for a life of radical faith. When we are aware of our inability, it causes us to depend on him. He's the God of more than enough. Everybody say, more than enough. We sing that song a lot. He's the one who works through us to do what we cannot do on our own. He cannot do on our own. So the first thing we get to do is encounter Abba Father. And then we get to encounter Abba's heart. 
of his heart. And he loves to whisper to us. But we have to be listening. We have to be paying attention. And we have to get quiet and still enough to hear. I know sometimes the guys that are in jail are the only ones that are listening. (laughs) It seems that they've stopped long enough for God to say, hey, I'm, I'm pursuing you. And starts revealing them. Because our lives just get so crazy. And so he starts whispering to us. And I love the whispers that he does. I love the whispers. These all happened this week. I didn't even know Brian and Candace did these little, um, little quotes or little messages on Facebook. I thought it was always on the big whisper one that he does uh, every day. And uh, they've started putting these little ones on. So the beginning of the week, as I'm writing out this message, these are the ones. I'm going to share three of them with you. First of all, on Monday, the 13th, there's no safer place to be than in the arms of the Lord. Amen? In the sanctuary of his presence. We sang that. Thank you, uh, worship team. Great songs, great songs that that talked about, really, we had a message already, just in worship. In the sanctuary of his presence, nothing can harm us. Fear, confusion, anxiety, they all vanish with the abundance of his love surrounding us. Our overworked minds, everybody have overworked minds and swirling thoughts? Yeah, we can all say that. Our overworked minds and swirling thoughts find rest when we yield our reasoning and allow him to fill our soul. Striving becomes a thing of the past as rest and trust work together in harmony. Then the very next day, it's even in the darkest times of your life, Jesus is there. It's during these valley seasons when you feel alone, confused, fearful, and sometimes angry that his love is so solidified in you. Trials become what? A launching pad for glorious transformation and victory. Even if you don't have the strength to pray one single word, keep your heart toward him and he will see you through. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. I love those one word prayers. The best one. Ready? I'll pull the mic away. Help! That's a great prayer. He shows up. He shows up at those prayers. 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 prayers. Amen. He shows up at those prayers. Amen. He shows up at those prayers. Help. Yeah. He loves to do that. Okay, I got one more, I think, on the next one. Yeah, here's one that happened Wednesday. So, success, you know, each day. The Lord's love is relentless. Amen? Amen. He will never give up on you. He doesn't look at you one way when you're good and another when you're going through tough times and your faith is challenged. Your weaknesses don't surprise him. Did you hear that? Your weaknesses don't surprise him. He loves you despite of them. Yeah. He loves you despite of them. Yes, he loves me. <laughs> he loves all of you, but I'm his favorite. So, and you're each you're each a favorite, right? That's really how it works. That's really how it works. So, thank you for the whispers. I love it that Travis does a a daily whisper, and I even love it more when him and Jennifer do it together, because it brings in her her feel into it. They're so good on Facebook. And uh, I just love it. The Lord's love is relentless. I have so much more. All right, I'm going to cut to the chase, all right? 
This is probably my favorite part. He loves to encounter us through his word. His word is there so powerful and ready to speak to us. And uh, I actually, this, this scripture came up and I shared it to Christy and I said, you know what, this is my life verse. This is my life verse. Listen to it in Psalm 119. You're my p- place of quiet retreat and your wraparound presence becomes my shield as I wrap myself in your word. Your wraparound presence becomes my shield as I wrap myself in your word. And I start my mornings like that. And I just, uh, I just appreciate that time in the morning when it's so quiet, except for him speaking. And he reveals things. I, I'm so grateful on Father's Day because... I not only had um, a father that changed a curse to generational blessings when he chose not to drink anymore, and now we have generations that don't struggle with alcohol. But I also had a father in love that before I... Mary Christie started speaking into my life at age 16 and a half. And some of my classes, my first class was with Gary Strubar, her dad, and it was called Creative Bible Teaching. And I fell in love with God's Word. <laughs> so much. I had to call Jeremy a couple times this week because of God's word that he spoke to me. And I normally, I told Christy, I think it was on his birthday, I said, it's so hard because I normally would call Gary and share that. But so now I share it with Jeremy and I share it with other men. And I just love how God's word speaks to your heart right where you need it. Everybody say, Rhema. Rhema. Now, if you say it in, in Greek the right way, it's, there's an H in front of it, all right? Hrema, hrema. Can you say that? Hrema, hrema. Hrema is God's word at your point of need. Hrema is God speaking to you through his word exactly what you need to hear at that point. And it's so powerful. When you start experiencing that daily, you can't get enough of it. It's just like, it's better than a drug. (laughs) It's better than anything else out there. And so I told you that I started, I started listening to all of the, of the uh, Joshua Will, uh, Joshua Mills soakings in the mornings. And that's actually even before I sit down and, and start reading and start listening. But I'm listening to all these, and one of them in particular uh, came up. And Psalm 91 is, is normally called the, so, the soldier's prayer. The soldier's prayer. And uh, we actually share this in the, in the workshop And I love the last part because a transition happens within Psalm 91. Because when he starts out, he first says, this is what I declare about the Lord. And there's some good things there all the way through. He loans my refuge, my my place of safety, my God, I trust him. He rescues me from every trap, protects me from deadly disease. I love this. His massive arms are protecting me. I run under his covering of majesty, his faithful promises of my armor and protection. I never worry. Boy, what a great prayer. What a great prayer right here to speak over your life. I never worry about demonic danger or forces at night, nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against me. Here's a good one. I don't fear a thing. 
There is a spirit of fear on our land right now that just tries to keep on hanging on. Perfect love gives it the boot. Perfect love. Let him love you. We're going to do a, a little soaking here in just a bit it, that lets God love us. If I make the Lord my refuge, if I make the most high my shelter, I will always be shielded from harm. How could evil prevail against me? Or disease even infect me? Right? God sends angels. I love this. Angels with special orders. How many of you know you have angels with special orders over you? Amen. Yeah. Always in charge. I have some great pictures of that, too. <laughs> That people have painted. Angels with special orders. Wherever I go, defending me from harm. If I walk into a trap, they'll be there for me, keeping me from stumbling. I'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest power of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath my feet. By the way, when, when we're going through this in the morning, I'm trampling on the treadmill. I hope I don't give it too much of a workout, Christy. You think it can handle it? Let her rip. And then there's a shift. There's a shift in Psalm 91. And this is when God starts speaking over you. Over you. Because you have loved me, delighted in me, have been loyal to my name. I will greatly protect you. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. You'll fill my presence in your time of trouble. I will deliver you and bring you honor. I will satisfy you with a full life, with all that I do for you, for you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. So I want to close with one of these, the last part called the healing place. And I want us to have receive some healing today through God speaking over us. Amen. But I think I'd like us to stand and open up as my grandkids call it, assume the position. All right? Open hands means we get to receive. So let's receive some healing today as Zach plays his part and let's let him love us today. And that's how we're going to close. All right.